Okay, I'm sure you didn't miss us a lot. We were just away for just a few minutes. I'm here with the one and only and amazing Yoni Solomon, Solomon from G2, the product marketing director of G2. Welcome, Yoni. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here today. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very excited to talk about, I think, my favorite subject, which is, um, oh. which is how to message and position products today. Oh, we're so happy about that. So Yoni will uh, talk about priming your product positioning for direct response. Uh, uh, and of course, the takeaways for, of today's session will be how to nail foundational messaging, how to build consistent and template product value stories, how to accelerate uh, G2's product launch process, create landing pages, emails, PR, and even booths. And of course, increase product campaign conversion by 900% why oh why <laughs> okay thank you so much you are ready to start the floor is yours awesome well hi everybody uh first off it's it's great to be with you all today even even virtually uh at plg disrupt and what we're going to talk about today is a topic again that's near and dear to my heart i really think probably my favorite topic uh, of all in regards to product marketing uh, which is all about storytelling specifically how we at g2 um, position and message our products for effective GTM delivery. Um, and so with that, let's go ahead and get started. And so for a, a quick look at today's agenda, first I'll just quickly introduce myself and then we'll do an overview of what life looks like for us product marketers, right? Who routinely sit at the middle of your product, marketing and sales organizations. Um, and then we're gonna dive into G2's go-to-market positioning process where I'll actually give you uh, a sneak peek into my personal messaging process and show you exactly how we really prime our messaging for direct response and demand. Um, and so with that, and after that, of course, we'll wrap up with some key takeaways. And so, you know, for with that, let's go ahead and kick things off with some intros. And so first off, a little bit about me. My name is Yoni uh, and I lead product marketing and go to market at G2. And for a little about us, we're the world's largest marketplace for B2B technology. Um, and before coming to G2, I spent nearly a decade in B2B SaaS for some of Chicago's top software companies. Uh, and so when I'm not doing product marketing, I actually love writing about it and talking about it, obviously, in Forbes and other publications. Um, and my team at G2 was actually named the number one product marketing team in business and tech last year. Uh, and we were actually renominated re this year as a top five global finalist by the Product Marketing Alliance. Uh, and I was also fortunate to be named one of uh, tech's 50 most influential product marketers. But but basically what, what all of that means is my team and I, all the live long day, um, live at the middle of product marketing and sales uh, and really at what we call the intersection. Um, and truly living at that intersection as a product marketer is what I think is the key uh, to achieving true product-led growth. And so with that, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the life of a product marketer? And so again, it, it's our job as product marketers to essentially bring it all together uh, we live at the intersection of product, marketing, and sales. But that said, we're not quite products. We're not quite sales. And you know, for that matter, we're, we're not quite your traditional demand gen or content marketing or, or, or brand marketers either. Uh, but ultimately, what we help do is we, we drive value for our organizations when we're aligned with all three of those functions, um, all to ensure that product is building capabilities for the real needs and pains of the market, two, to ensure that, that marketing has the, the context and the messaging that they need to launch campaigns and drive demand. Uh, and then three, to ensure that sales or CS, really your revenue org, if they have the context and the pricing and the, the resources and the tools that they need to actually sell those capabilities in. Um, and so consider your product marketing friends at the end of the day to be both um, advocates and conductors uh, for product-led growth initiatives. And look, I'll be the first to admit, it's, it's really not easy. Um, life at the intersection can take a toll, uh, which is why success in product marketing actually starts and ends with having a strong and versatile team, um, the kind of team that has diverse skill sets and, and expertise and natural leanings across the things that you're really going to need from a product marketing team. Uh, so that includes written storytelling, verbal storytelling, um, true product expertise, um, of course, campaign and strategy execution, and then revenue generation. But along with having a strong team, successfully launching products and capabilities requires um, a strong process, uh, one that's consistently managed and run uh, from launch to launch, which is exactly how we do things at G2 for product launches, big and small. 
And that GTM process is really only as successful as the people who have actually bought into it. And so having that solid GTM launch process is actually critical for all functions. And what it does for them is that they then now know exactly what they need to do, when they need to do it, and in what sequential order so that we as, a, as an organization, as a product-led organization, um, can ensure a successful launch. And then, of course, you know, you really can't live from the intersection unless you're actually reporting from it, right? So we follow our programs religiously from end to end. And when I say end to end, I mean the full funnel. So this is going to include top of funnel submissions and leads, um, all of the opportunities influenced uh, from every single program that we launch at G2. And then, of course, we're following that down to closed one from those opportunities. So we don't want to know about the money in the bank from all of those activities. Um, and then all the way through product adoption to ensure that the stuff that we're putting out there into the market and getting adopt and getting sold is actually being adopted and actually being used. Um, and then finally, we'll follow that one step further all the way through to customer renewals. And so that's going to help us ensure that the opportunities that we're driving um, and the products that are getting adopted are contributing to the long-term success, the recurring success of the company. And that's typically in things like lifetime value. And then while we're on the topic of processes for building teams uh, and managing launches and of course tracking ROI, it's only natural that we have a process for the way that we message and the way that we storytell uh, around our products too. And so with that, let's go into our next section, which is of course gonna be all about exactly how we message in position at G2. And so look, why is this really important? Well, as a storyteller myself, I just wanna totally be honest with you all. Storytelling is really hard, uh, specifically telling human stories about software that both positions their value correctly while remaining human and fun and punchy enough to elicit a response. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> Um, and that's why it's so common for, for all of us to either, um, get lost in the way in, in terms of like having way too much content and positioning. And, and basically that messaging doesn't get accurately transitioned over to direct response copy. And so what you have are landing pages that are full of copy that, that don't lead to direct response. But then on the other side, without that foundational product marketing positioning, um, it's not really easy to understand what the heck a campaign's value story actually is. Um, and when the direct response copy team isn't properly sourced from foundational messaging, what you end up with um, are ads in landing pages and emails that, that just aren't accurate or, or reflective of this thing that you're trying to launch. And so the truth is, as with all things in life, you need both. Um, you need both working in total alignment together. And remember the word alignment because we're going to be talking a lot about it today. Um, but before we as product marketers can get to like all of this fancy, beautiful stuff that product managers and sales folks want for their launches, um, we have to start with this thing that you see on the side here, which is a message house. And so let's talk about positioning exercises because a G2, they are the foundation, if you will, for, for everything that we do. Um, that foundational positioning exercise is something that we product marketers call an uh, a message house. And whether it is for a launch of a small value add feature or for a major go to market for a brand new company that we bought. Um, and so now we need to incorporate that company into our own umbrella. We're always going to start with a messaging house. And I can't stress that enough, regardless of what you're launching with, it, it has to start with that message house. Um, there are a variety of different formats online as, as you can sort of see here, but at the end of the day, they, they all more or less um, save the, the same end purpose. Um, which is to comprehensively define um, a product's value story. And, and I personally love this exercise as a product marketer. It's basically, when you think about it, kind of like solving a puzzle. Um, you're creating a color palette, if you will, for your copywriters and even for your sales teams to tell stories with. Um, but all in all, regardless of the format that they use, they really should all encompass a couple things. Um, you're going to need your about statement in there. You're going to need your three core value pillars along with relevant industry stats, um, persona details, product hierarchy information, and all of the above um, so that literally anybody can read your one page message house and understand exactly what this thing is, who it's for, and why it's important. And then the good news is once you've nailed that foundational story, you can then transform it into direct response copy. And so that's going to be the things that you know and love, um, the emails, the ads, the content that's going to grab someone's attention and elicit excitement, elicit intrigue, um, fascination, which is an important copywriting principle. But those are 
those are really important key emotional ingredients that, that you're going to need, um, especially if your stories are going to drive conversion. And so let's talk about where messaging typically occurs, because I think one of the most common mistakes when pulling together that go to market story is actually starting a little bit too late in the process. Um, I would actually argue that stages one through three here of our GTM launch process at G2 is where we truly uncover the, the foundational story and the direct response hook, if you will, that you're going to need before entering stage four, which is major go to market launch and, and all of this stuff goes into the market. Um, and so let's talk about stages one and two, because in ideation and then in build, you're working closely with product management, right? Who's going to help you understand the key elements of what this thing is, um, how it works and, and who it could be for. But then when we enter stage three, which is soft launch, you're actually going to be hearing real feedback and reactions from um, your, your beta testers and, and your customers on the effectiveness of this solution and how it helps them achieve their goals. And look, at the end of the day, all of this is absolute gold um, as you start to build your message house. Um, and it's critically important um, to building an accurate messaging house that reflects what exactly this thing is and, of course, why it's going to matter to your buyers. And so what does it look like when you start to bring all of that stuff in together? Uh, so here's a look at an actual message house that we created for a major integration that we launched with LinkedIn. I'm going to leave this up here for a while because we're going to be able to walk through it together. Um, again, these message houses that look just like this are built for every single product, every feature, integration, every capability, big and small. And if you build it the right way, what you end up with is this one page Bible, if you will, that's going to define the following things. One. What is this capability? Two, who is it for? Three, if you have a product hierarchy, right, or a suite of solutions, where does it sit within that hierarchy? Is it, is it a feature? Is it a product? You know, what are we calling it? Um, four, how are we going to launch it? <laughs> um, very succinctly. Five, of course, and this is the most important part, what is the value um, along with any relevant data uh, and taglines that can help with direct response. And so even though at G2, for instance, um, we're not the copywriters who are responsible for that direct response in product marketing, um, I always want our product marketers thinking about that hook or that tagline, something that's going to grab someone's attention and really bring them into this story that we're trying to tell. And so look, it, it looks nice and it looks fancy, right? But the question is, how exactly do you get there? Um, and so it's here. Uh, on this slide where I'll share a little glimpse of uh, my private messaging process. And to be honest with everybody here today, this is the first time that I've ever showed this to anyone. So this is this will be an interesting exercise. Um, but as you can see here, sort of in sequential order, um, to build an accurate message house, I start with the following things. One, I start with a product demo. Um, I, I really believe this. You You can't effectively write about something and about why it's important if, if you don't really know what it is or how it works, right? You need that foundational understanding, that fundamental understanding. Two, market research. Um, your messaging ultimately won't resonate with buyers if you, if you don't actually know who they are, right? Or, or what their world looks like, um, who they compete against, what they're trying to buy, um, trends that are coming through. Number three, competitive research. You won't be able to differentiate your solution, really make it unique and stand apart if, if you don't understand the other solutions in the market and how they might be positioning themselves and talking about customers um, and what the value that they're leaning with is. Number four, customer voice. And this part is super underrated, but so important. This is the best way to actually talk about um, the market's problems, because if you really want to talk about the market's problems and, and products in an accurate way, you have to listen to them actually talk about their problems and their products. I'm a big believer in product marketing that, that we don't need to create messaging from scratch. If we're listening to live interviews and to recordings, if we're reading reviews, if we're doing that research, more often than not, the market is going to help tell that story for us. And then finally, number five, and this one's kind of the scariest one because I know not everyone's Salesforce instance is always very easy to navigate, but this is, this is a misstep for many product marketers. Um, your CRM, is a gold mine for messaging. Um, you can use it to essentially validate your personas based on role and title, of course. Um, you can validate their problems. Um, you can basically run your messaging against similar opportunities in Salesforce and see if the things that resulted in uh, a closed one are inherently tied to the messaging that you're trying to deliver, or, or are you totally off and you're losing deals for the wrong reasons? 
all in all, if you can cover all five of these bases the right way, you're going to end up with a really solid message house. And so let's talk about what you get at the very end of that. Hopefully, if you've covered these bases, you do end up with that really sort of fully flushed out messaging house. Um, and a G2, when we as a product marketer have, have finished nailing that message house, right? The purpose, the details, the go-to-market launch plan, and then what our value is going to be, um, we actually take that message house and we pass it over to our partners um, in creative and in copy. And what they're going to do is they're going to go through this one-page doc, right? This one-page Bible on what this thing is, and they are going to find those those key points or those key hooks for your landing pages or for your emails um, to ensure that this story that you've just spent all of this time researching and refining and building will convert, actually convert. And that's really been the key ingredient to our success at G2. Um, for truly successful go-to-market messaging and outcomes, I'd argue that you can't have one function without the other, um, being a strong, of course, product marketing and copywriting function. And I know that not every company has a strong copywriting function or maybe doesn't have one, but let me tell you, it is, it is not a luxury, it is essential. Product marketing needs to build that foundation, that, that blueprint, which copy then turns into messaging that's primed to convert. Um, and so I always like to use this slide as a shout out because um, I have a partner in crime at G2, our head of copy, his name is Eddie. He's become one of my good friends and without his skills and, and his eye on these message houses, our campaigns, they just wouldn't be as successful. Um, it, 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 we could not have done it without him. And so let's talk about what happens when you have those two functions and functions working together, product marketing and copy. You get some serious outcomes when you start to prime that positioning for direct response. Um, and so here's a quick look at the G2 site. When I joined G2 uh, about a year and a half ago, this was one of the things that I was responsible for relaunching. And so we relaunched this website uh, along with my copy, of course, and my creative teams. What we changed was the entire messaging foundation for the G2 selling story. And so then we relaunched this website with, of course, a better visual brand, as you can see, to coincide with like that, that new launch of the website. Um, and then we ran a little bit of a test. Uh, from January 2019 to January 2020, the conversion on this site, by the way, increased 8,000%. Since then, to stretch it out till now, we're still seeing a 900% increase in conversion on this website. And if you look really carefully here, as you can see, traffic year over year pretty much stayed the same. But then something very unusual happened when we relaunched the new selling story. We just saw a massive skyrocket in, in conversion that has since turned into several million dollars in sourced and attributed revenue. Um, really, the key wasn't better traffic. The key was a better story, a, a better product-led story. And that story, at the end of the day, really sold for us. And so now let's talk about the things that we've learned today. And of course, wrap up with some key takeaways. The things that I've learned along the way at my time at G2 starts with number one, um, positioning is really no different than anything else that you're gonna do in a business setting. Um, it requires process, an agreed upon process, and then it requires discipline to keep following that process, to go deeper and deeper and get more comfortable in that process. At the end of the day, your positioning and messaging process should be like breathing. It is a natural extension of you as a product marketer. Number two, effective messaging is equal parts experiential, i.e. the things that we're doing to elicit an emotional response to our story, Two, anecdotal, which is going to be the things, you know, are we listening to users um, actually talk about this stuff? And are we reflecting that in our messaging? And then three, analytical. Are we doing the amount, the, the right amount of research? And are we researching in the right areas to really build that message? Um, and then probably a little bit of luck in there. But I think experiential, anecdotal, and analytical are going to be those key ingredients to effective messaging. And then the last piece, and I'm a big believer in this both in life and then, of course, in product marketing. Quality in, quality out. Garbage in, garbage out. If you want your creative and copy team to crush its marketing resources, really make them pop, you must provide them with quality messaging houses to begin with. Um, remember, at the end of the day, they're, they're responsible for painting the picture, but you're the one who's providing them the color palette. That's got to come from you. The value, the research, the data points, give them the resources and the context that they need to find those perfect hooks for your campaigns. And so with that, um, it has been a pleasure 
getting to talk about my favorite topic in product marketing, right? Go to market positioning and messaging. And it's also been awesome getting to, to share a little bit about how I go through the process of finding those stories and, and working with my teams at G2 to launch stories that, that really deliver um, and drive this, this product led growth philosophy that we um, rely on so heavily at G2. And so with that, it's, it's been a pleasure and really appreciate the time today. Yoni, thank you so much for this amazing presentation. Not only the visuals, but the content was so rich and we got some serious insights here. So I have one question. Uh, what sure. would you recommend to product marketers that their company undergoes a PLG uh, transformation process? How can they optimize product positioning? Yeah, I think it starts with product management, which is why mm -hmm. steps one and two in our launch process, that, that foundational messaging that you're building for your launches has to start with conversations between you and the product manager, because the mm -hmm. product manager is really the spiritual leader of this, the, this thing that we're trying to build. And so if we're going to really lead with a product-led growth philosophy, that core story in that direction has to come from product first. And then it's mm -hmm. our job in marketing to vet that story against the market and against consumers and against sales, but, but ultimately a true product-led organization starts its messaging philosophy and its story philosophy with our friends in product management. Totally agree. And I have another question. Um, can you suggest us the top three learnings in aligning with product management in regards to product positioning? Yeah. Um, for starters, ask many, many questions. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I think sometimes the product managers are so close um, to, to the roadmaps and, and are so in it that sometimes there are things that they will assume that you know or understand about the product that you just don't. And so ask many questions, see the demo live. And I think the mm -hmm. last piece is make sure that the product managers feel like they're part of the launch. And so that's not only signing off on the message house, but let mm -hmm. them actually see the messaging materials that make their way into emails, into landing pages, into customers. Let them see the reviews and the, the case studies that come from the products that they launch so that they really see the sort of end result of their vision. Bring them mm. closer to the marketing org, not further away. Amazing point. Totally agree. Thank you so much, Yoni. It was an amazing presentation and thank you for the answers. I wish yeah. you all the best for the future endeavors and G2. And I hope that we meet again in the future. Awesome. I love talking to all people in product. So please, I'm on LinkedIn. Reach out to me anytime if you'd like to talk more about product marketing. <laughs> Super. Thank you. Thank Have you. a nice day. Take care. Thank you. Okay, stay with us because the next session is very, very different, insightful, and very, very inspiring. We have the one, the one and only Anna Mamalaki. Stay tuned. Just in a few minutes, we'll be here with you again.